Hi everyone, Cinder here, and welcome to a special first look at War Banners. I'm the only one here right now, but hopefully people get the message, hey, Central streaming, and we'll show up for this uh, first impressions look at this game. Uh, this is a game by Castlin Games. I hope I said that right. Probably didn't. For that, I apologize. Uh, this comes out the 18th on Steam for $20. That's when uh, this comes out and how much it's going to be. Uh, this is described as, by them, uh, indie, turn-based, tactical strategy game with role-playing elements. So, tactical, turn-based, maybe something in the vein of um, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, a Fire Emblem, uh, maybe something like that, maybe closer to an Ogre Battle. We'll have to see. This will be a first look for yours truly as well. I've not played or watched anything on this game. Um, I would like to thank um, Josh Knapp, I said his name correctly, if not, I deeply apologize, uh, and the Indie Bros for giving me a key, yes, they gave me a key to uh, check this game out and to show you all some of this game. I'll put this on the channel afterwards for those of you that uh, don't make it to the don't make it to the stream. So. Yay. And then a, hopefully a bunch of you will watch it on YouTube. Hooray. Um, we're going to check it out. It sounds kind of up my alley. I do like turn-based strategy games. So let's see how it goes. Difficulty. Easy, normal, hard, nightmare. All units have 30% less health. Change this option in the options menu. Uh, let's probably make the game go faster in a way we'll just go with whatever the default is let's see easy less enemies uh 20 percent more gold for completing missions or is that minus 20 per no it's it's just the dash to show you like if you had bullet points uh 20 percent more gold for completing missions Woo! recommended for players new to the genre uh, normal classic rules without any bonuses or penalties recommended for most players Hard there are more enemies and you get 20% less gold for completing missions probably use gold to buy equipment Maybe hire more units We'll have to see Nightmare more enemies units cannot be resurrected. I don't like that 20 per, uh, minus 20 percent less gold for completing missions if it's fire emblem esque though then I would be used to that. I start over when the character dies anyway. <laughs> Recommended for players who are not afraid of difficulties. After the start of the game, this difficulty cannot be selected or changed from. You're stuck with it. <laughs> um, I'm going to play on normal just because that's going to be the baseline of how we how we look at games. That's, that's how I do it. Uh, I play on normal if I don't know the game. I'm doing first impression videos like this to get a baseline because a lot of people play on normal. Just know there are higher difficulties and an easier difficulty if things are too tough. It's been 500 years since the Necromancers started the Great War. Every city, every village, every farm was drowned in fire and blood. But the people survived. They won. By the grace of the gods and the power of steel, the undead were banished from the lands of the living and the necromancers were destroyed. Legend preserved the name of the hero who rose up to unite all the kingdoms in the face of the ruthless enemy, Svenfeld. The events of the distant past live on thanks to the gray-bearded storyteller. Is that me? Am I the gray-bearded storyteller? <laughs> Master Pringus the innkeeper was busying himself shouting at the hapless maid, his tavern squatting in a wretched village on the banks of the river uh, Zevari, was rarely busy. This afternoon was an exception. The company of stern-looking men spread across two tables. Their crude weapons were propped in the darkness and dustiest corner of the main room. Get a move on, Sheila. Mugs won't fill themselves. 
Mr. Pringus went out onto the porch for some air. Sheila could manage. The arrow seemed to whistle out of thin air. It pierced his throat. Silence reigned for a few seconds. It was shattered by Sheila's shriek. The shrill sound roused the drinking men from their lethargy. They tumbled over each other, reached their weapons, cursing amidst the overturned furniture. A young man in plate armor was the first to find his weapon. He charged out of the tavern, brandishing his longsword. Okay. Arrow keys to move the map. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just took a little bit to, to pull up. Uh, left mouse button to select a unit, attack, move, interact, everything with the mouse. Right mouse button, display information. Okay. So right click for information, left click to pull up menu. Escape, close any window, launch the help menu with escape. That might be useful. Uh, these are just hotkeys. You can do everything from clicking, I'm sure. Space to end the turn. Hopefully the sound's all right. Like I don't think the, the game's overpowering me. Hard to tell when you're alone. <laughs> select the next unit within. B to select the next unit capable of attack. QWE, use a potion from the respective slot. ASD, use a skill. ZXC, so the left side of your keyboard. Top three keys, middle three keys, bottom three keys. From the left to... Uh, have shortcuts. Shortcuts are nice. H for the manual. Scroll the mouse wheel to zoom. That's pretty standard. Move the camera with arrow keys. Should already figured that out. Or by pressing down the mouse wheel. I'll just use arrow keys. Shaded hexes. Uh, hexes movable too. Okay, so we have a movement system. Have. Um, we'll have after moving the color of the numbers means red the unit will not have enough action points to attack after moving to this hex If they're orange the unit will have enough action points to attack after moving to this hex green The unit will have more action points than required for the attack after moving to the hex So green is you'll have extra left over um, Orange is you have just enough to attack after moving there so it's like the edge of being able to attack red you can move there but you won't be able to attack afterwards you won't have enough action points if a unit is entered into enemy's zone of control he can move no further unless he's free of a zone of control so this is the zone of control if you move next to an enemy you can't move any further the enemy will stop your movement if you move anywhere uh, next to them Okay. That's what we have. We have an archer, swordman, swordman, main character, maybe, at least for this battle, Roderick. So he has a name. He's not just generic. Action point usage. Move one. Plus terrain penalties, if any. Okay, so terrain does matter. It'll probably give us some defensive bonuses, maybe some negatives, and will also uh, can hinder movement. Uh, plus one if currently in zone of control. So to get out of an enemy zone of control, you got to pay extra. Attack moving object is three. So you need three action points to swing or use an object. Using skills, spells, potions, launching a catapult. That sounds like fun. Opening a gate is four. And you have to spend a action point to turn facing will more than likely matter facing is this outline here um, usually in these kind of games if you attack from behind to the side you get uh, either bonus to hit bonus damage or both <laughs> red bars health blue bars mana that's standard action points there and any conditions we have, positive or negative, I would assume. Okay. Swordsmen. So we have four swordsmen, two archers, and the leader here, uh, Roderick. Strength five. Magnitude of damage caused by an attack. Okay, so we got some basic... Some basic things there. It's kind of weird how the 
how the uh, um, help menus are popping up. Like they seem to be a little random. It's a, it, it they pop up if I stay on a character for too long. It feels like I feel like they should either be popping up faster or when I try to do something specific. If the selected unit has enough action points of stamina for the attack, three, four, uh, three action points and four stamina for most. What stamina? <laughs> We've seen action points, but we didn't hear stamina. We'll have to find that. Attack markers are drawn on all units within range. So attack marker. It'll have swords basically saying, hey, you can hit it. Attack marker, if the attack is fatal, a skull will be drawn. So if you see a skull, you will kill that unit. Uh, to hit chance. <laughs> That's a low to hit chance, only 55. Hopefully it gets higher than that. Uh, damage you're going to do. So hit, dam so it's damage and then hit. Hits on the right, damage on the left. Range, this is how far the character can attack. So, of course, Swordsman, you can only swing in melee. Tit Chance is modified by the direction relative of the facing character. Like I talked about, if you swing from behind. Attacking from directly in front, no bonus. If you're slightly off to the side, but you still see part of the line, it's plus one. If there is no line at all, like here, right next to the line, you get plus three accuracy. And if you swing directly from behind, it's plus five. So this would be more like a flank attack or side attack. And if you hit directly from behind, that's the best. If accuracy of an attack equals evasion of defender, to hit chance is 50%. Okay, so if you have, if my accuracy is equal to their evasion, it's 50%. It's a coin flip. One point in difference between accuracy and evasion is 5%. So if I have, let's say, 6 accuracy with, let's say, a plus 1 bonus, and they have 5 evasion, I'll have a 55 chance to hit. I like that I can wrap my head around the math. Like that's nice. It'll help you plan out your plan out your moves um, as you become more familiar with the game. Uh, cannot be more than ninety, so you always have a chance to miss. You'll always have a ten percent chance to miss. That's interesting. Um, you'll always have a ten percent chance to hit, no matter how bad it is. <laughs> Uh, damage equals strength minus armor. That's very, very straightforward. Damage may not be less than one. So if you hit, you always do at least one point of damage. No uh, noise from like fire emblem where it's tink. No, uh, no sound of that here. You'll always do one if you hit. I like that I can get my head around the mathematics because it's important for strategy games. There's really turn-based strategy games like this because you need to plan out your moves. So it's good when you can do that. Okay. The uh, whoa, the archer's got a huge range. How many spaces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, their bow has a range of seven. That is crazy. Unit consumes four action points for one attack. That's uh, pulling the bow, aiming, everything. So it needs four points to swing. Uh, unit can swim. Our archer has fire arrows. Unit receives a plus one strength of adjacent to a fire. Oh, if it has fire next to it. That's, a, that's really cool. I like that. If he has access to fire next to him, he can... May, turn his arrow into a flaming arrow and then get plus one damage plus one strength cool cool i like that so if we had like a fire pit next to him or just if i guess if a building's on fire which we don't want that here but <laughs> you know like a fire pit or something that'd be really cool 
Um, I like the str the uh, the strategy thought of it. I think that's really neat. Um, let's see. I'm going to check some settings real quick. This is what's what's fun when you when you uh. When you're first, when you're doing a first impressions video. <laughs> so that's, that's that. Oh, hi Neko. Yay, somebody's here. <laughs> uh, we are looking at War Banners. Uh, this is a strategy game. I just started it. So you can see the facing here. Uh, let's take a look at stats. So strength. Does everybody have five strength? Yep. All our characters have five strength so far. Accuracy. Uh, illumination plus two. I guess because it's light outside. So they can see. They can actually see what's going on. Uh, five points of evasion. Oh, the swordsmen have more. Probably because of the shield. Evasion, quote unquote. But, I mean, you can block with the shield, so less chance of getting hit. Range? Yes, yeah, seven, because of the bow. One armor. I like that you can hover over and see what everything is. That's really nice. And that may seem seem like a no-duh thing, but you'd be surprised how many games don't do that. <laughs> how many indie games don't do that. Reduce magical damage taken. Okay, so you have... Armor reduces physical damage, and then you have a magic resist as well. So that's nice. Uh, health, when, when it drops to zero, unit dies. Let's try to not have that happen. Level one. Oh, everybody has a level. Are you level one too, Roderick? Yes. Kills. Oh, wow, it keeps track of the unit's kills. That's, that's interesting. Okay, morale. When morale is more than 35, unit receives a plus one to accuracy, strength, and evasion. If morale is less than 15, they get a minus one to accuracy, strength, and evasion. So morale will be important. Yeah, also, like that, Neko, I like being able to see what I need on the fly. Like, seeing, what is this again? Oh, accuracy, cool. Just being able to see it on the fly helps instead of having to go into a menu and looking everything up. If morale drops to zero, the unit panics and attempts to route. It attempts to run. So we definitely don't want act. Uh, we definitely don't want morale to get to zero. We don't want it less than fifteen either. <laughs> morale increases by successfully attacking, drinking a courage potion, killing enemies, or getting positive spells. Morale drops if they take damage, an ally dies, that makes sense. That's probably a big drop of morale. And negative spells will lower them as well. Stamina. Unit restores three stamina each turn. When stamina is less than 50%, unit receives a minus one to accuracy and evasion. If it's less than 25%, they're really tired. Minus one to strength, accuracy, and evasion. I wonder if that stacks. So at 25%, is it minus two to accuracy and two to evasion? Or um, is it is it just you get that minus one to strength slapped on, on top of it? If you are attacked... Uh, minus one to stamina. If you use spells, minus two. If you attack, use skills, interact with objects, swim, all of it is minus four. So stamina is going to be a thing. You can't just have one unit run around and slap everything down. They're going to run out of stamina. Okay, it looks like all the... So the archers have the same stats. So there's that. Mana and speed. As action points is attacked, he gets plus one to evasion, but loses one action point. 
unspent action points are transformed into stamina. So if you don't use up your action points, you can get stamina back faster. It's like you're resting. Um... Okay. That's good to know. And it is daytime. <laughs> Each hex has an illumination level. Basically, can you see it? <laughs> there are three levels. Bright, shaded, and dark. Shaded confers units with either day vision and night vision. No bonus. Okay. So, do you see in the dark or not? I mean, that makes sense. Units with universal vision always get plus one to accuracy and evasion. Interesting. You, know, you can see both in day and night. And the same. That's cool. I mean, you can read the rest of it there, but it's it makes pretty much sense. If you can, if you could see, you get a plus to accuracy <laughs> and evasion because you can see what's happening. But if you can't, then you get a minus. I mean, it makes sense. Seems you really need to plan out what you want to do so you don't waste stamina. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay, let's look at the swordsman. Um, same health, same morale, less stamina, probably because of heavier armor. Yeah, it has two armor. Uh, of course, they're using swords, so they only hit next to them. But they have 10 evasion, probably lending to their shields. Yep. Unit receives a plus 5 evasion from all ranged attacks. Says all ranged attacks. Not necessarily... Um... Not necessarily from melee attacks, which is interesting. Formation. Unit receives a plus two to evasion if adjacent to a friendly unit with the ability formation. Okay, because they're in formation. They're basically covering for each other, so they get extra to evasion. You know, you have somebody else's shield to help you. You're covering each other with your shields. That's cool. So since they're standing next to each other... And they're standing next to each other. So we'll try to keep the swordsmen together. Uh, let's go over our leader here. At least, I assume he's the leader. He's the only one with the name. Roderick. He has one extra health. Uh, he has more morale. 18 stamina. 8 accuracy. So he has the same accuracy. He doesn't have the bonus of formation like these two do. Oh, yeah, he does, actually. He does have formation. He has a shield. Uh, Commander. Friendly units within two hexes receive a plus one bonus to accuracy and to evasion. That's really cool. Some, like, a, a bonus from his leadership. Like, a leadership bonus. That's awesome. So, he's not getting the plus one that they're uniting under effect of Commander. <laughs> that the swordsmen are getting. But he still has nine. Two for it being daylight, and two for the formation bonus. He has three armor, because he's in plate, as we got from the description, where it looks like these guys are in chainmail. So he has three armor. These are skills they have. Defensive stance. Unit receives a plus six to evasion for one turn. Requires a uh, cooldown. The five in parentheses may be the cooldown. So, uh, five. Four action points, four stamina to use defensive stance. But if a unit's getting overwhelmed, they can uh, have plus six. Leader normally has better armor. That's true. <laughs> okay, there's the basis of our units. Let's take a look at the enemy if we can. Ah, oh, they're orcs. Orc Warrior. They have more health than we do. They also have more strength. 25 morale, 17 stamina. 6 strength, 7 accuracy, because they can also see in the daylight. Uh, they have shields. 2 armor. You're the same? Yes. Berserker. 
You're the leader of this group, maybe. Oh, there's an orc archer. You're not cool. <laughs> Don't like that. And... Orc boar rider. That's not great. <laughs> you get six action points because of boar. Uh, unit cannot push or climb ladders. Unit is immu immune to being moved or pushed, though, because boar. Because <laughs> mount. Um, it does attack slow. It needs four action points to swing. Uh, unit receives a plus five evasion from all range attacks, all the shields, which is not great. Another orc warrior. Berserker. Lot of morale. Which makes sense. He's just, you know, whoa, and just charging. Berserker units typically have a lot of morale. Seven strength, seven accuracy. So even one more strength than the orc warriors. Five evasion. I think that's less evasion, though. Yeah, one less evasion. One range, no armor, because Berserker. And magic resistance. Cleave. Unit receives two action points when it kills an enemy. Let's not have that happen. Unit consumes four action points for one attack. Attack slow. Eviscerate. Attack inflicts a bleeding. Take one damage at the beginning of turn for three turns. Ouch. So it's a damage over time. Boar swing. Units adjacent in melee. Additionally. Unit attacks in melee. Additionally, the units adjacent to both the attacker and defender. Because he swings in a big arc. Friendly fire possible. Huh, that's interesting. And he can swim. No shield. Okay, priority targets. Uh, what are these? Peasant! Uh, they are not very strong. <laughs> but they're probably going to try to help us defend. Yeah, ally. We're not going to have... Since they're, it has a blue hex, I assume we're not going to have control over them, but they're going to move on their own. Uh, but they'll try to help us. Uh, let's see what they can do. Giant Scourge. Unit receives a, a plus four to strength if defender has ability ride or huge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, that's interesting that, uh, that the peasants have that. So they'll be good against the boar rider. Funny enough, they can do a bunch of damage to him. Slow attack, they can swim. Um, not not great morale. Dig. A Ford hex turns into a plane. Oh, they can like change uh, hex tiles. That'll be interesting. Uh, build a barricade. Or a bridge. They can build a bridge. That's cool. If you're able to like manipulate the terrain, that could be a lot of fun. Okay, uh, priority targets. The Berserker, because of the amount of damage he can do, plus being able to hit multiple targets. He doesn't have a shield, which means we have a pretty good shot shooting him. Uh, that'll be one of the priority targets for the archers. The other priority target, right off the bat, is the only thing that can shoot us back. Which is the orc archer, wherever he is. You? No, you're a warrior. You. This orc archer. Because he can fire and hit our characters from... Uh, from ranged as well. So we'll probably take a step forward, fire... Uh, but then the boar can get him. Or you're not the boar. You're the boar. Okay, that's fine. You won't be able to make it. You wouldn't be able to swing anyway. You'd just be able to move. Since you need four to swing. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's start. Can I take the actions in any order? Yes. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Where's undo? <laughs> Is there an undo? There may not be. 
I just wanted to move the, uh, I just wanted to move the place. Is there an undo like in a uh, fire emblem? Maybe not. Is this a manual? Oh, manual. There we go. Doesn't look like it. That's sad. <laughs> oh, that was just to turn the facing. Okay. Guy, if you click on them, you could turn which way they, which way they face. That's fine. Mm. We're learning here. All right, you're gonna put only 30. Oh yeah, because of the shield. You can only move two and swing. So one, two, unless you move more. Okay, move up. Sixty, missed, lame. <laughs> Okay, I think that's everybody's turn that I want to do something with. Turn. Okay. Did he miss? <laughs> I couldn't tell. Miss. There comes the boar rider. Okay. 25 for the boar rider, which isn't great. You will only be able to move here. Now there's the Berserker. My archers can't hit! <coughs> One, two, three. Fire at the Berserker. Ha! -ha! And move back one. Swing, good. Swing, good. Within two spaces. I was hoping to kill him. <laughs> now he's going to swing it at everybody. We're going to move him to be with to be with him. Okay. That ends this turn. I think he missed, which is great. <laughs> That's bad. That's also bad. Oh no, there he goes. He's swinging everybody. He hit two of them. <sighs> Hi, Cleverstone. Um, boy, the archers just do not have a have a good time with a lot of the a lot of these units miss miss come on hit you hit good 
One, two, three. You can get hit. Move one. Miss. <laughs> Boy, my luck is terrible. Um, that will end this turn sadly. Miss. Good. This peasant's gonna die. Oh, charge! Ow! Ah, missed. Oh yeah, abilities. Kind of forgot about those. Charge! Unit moves to an empty hex and attacks enemy with the face it with double strength. Ow, that's why we took 10. Our archers do not have a special ability. Lame. Move here. Oh, missed. Um, first things first. There we go. Okay, run and help the peasant. This peasant, unfortunately, is going to die. Heroic cry that Roderick has. I mean, he is our our uh, hero after all. At least the commander. Friendly units receive within two hexes receive five morale and a thirty percent chance to overcome being panicked. Requires four action points and four stamina. Neat. <laughs> Rally to me. That archer could get a hit. Good. Um. Move to Roderick. Looks like that's going to have to do it for this turn. Good job, peasant. Missed, yay. Ow. No, the peasant. <laughs> Move here. Turn that way. Miss. Fire at the archer. Let's take time to do that. Ah, missed. Let's go burn it. Heroic cry. Not quite as heroic as I wanted that to be. <laughs> Sounded more like a death cry. <laughs> anyway, uh, five morale, which is really important. 29. You're at 29. The archer's back at 26. That guy's back at 25, which I'm very happy about. Um, Continue to try. Ah, I want to kill him. Face down. Gonna have to worry about this guy starting to move. Okay, now that you have the morale back, you're gonna go help this guy. I mainly wanted him there to get the morale bonus. Next. Ah, missed. Onslaught, missed, awesome. We don't have an attack skill, I just noticed, with our group. for this guy's coming which I'm not happy about oh, miss. Miss. 
I don't want them to get a free swing if I don't have to. I know, we're gonna trap the boar rider. We're gonna, well, almost trap the boar rider. Make the boar rider think. Swing. There we go, took three. Good. Three, good. Next turn. Ha! Ah, do you have reach? I think the Pesa has a range of one. Because using a spear. How do you miss being right next to the target? The target dodges, it uses its shield. You know, that's typically how it's explained. Okay, we're going to start moving you. Because you're not doing anything to these guys anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can't fire this turn because it takes four action points to shoot the arrow because it's slow. That's fine. Move back one. Nice. Which HP do you have left? 17, jeez. 9. Continue swinging. 6 HP. There we go. It's getting low on stamina. We're wearing this guy out. Unfortunately, this guy is as well. He's down to three. Miss, miss. That's good. He's down to what? Four stamina. I think he's going to have to rest this turn. Roderick's front, fine. He can swing. Yeah, take four. Take four. Good. The boy Raider's down to five. Shoot the archer. Also shoot the archer. Ah, oh, missed. <laughs> Took three, good. I think that's everybody. Well, except for you, but you're just going to get stamina. Well. Use your action points. Defensive stance, because you're having to hold your own against these. Until I can get rid of the boar rider and then help. So for one turn, he has 16 evasion. Now, they still have a 10% chance to hit, but that's all they're getting. <laughs> and he hits. Of course he does. <laughs> and he hits. Wow. <laughs> Miss. Three. Almost dead. The peasant might kill him. <laughs> Alright, come on, Roderick. Got him, nice. There's no easy way for him to get out of this. Run all the way back here.
move up one. And that should give Roderick the bonus for having somebody else with his, uh, with the shield. Turn this way. That's going to sadly have to do it for this turn. Ah, oh, the peasant missed! <laughs> Ow. Oh, they're running after the guy. Good job. That one's done. Run up here. One, two. Swing. That's bad. Move one. Fire. One, two. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Move one, fire. Ah, missed. Roger hadn't gotten hit yet. He's feeling great. Ooh, heroic cry is back. Remember, if we can get morale above 35, you get a plus one to accuracy, a plus one to strength, and a plus one to evasion. And it's everybody within two. Move here. In turn. Ah, missed. Where are you going? <laughs> Bear, low obstacle. It can be pushed. It can be destroyed. It's flammable. Units with it cannot put... You can push the barrel. That's interesting. It can be destroyed. It's flammable. Which means you can catch it on fire. Occupy seven hexes. It's not flammable. It cannot be destroyed. You can't destroy houses. That's cool. Okay, first thing we're going to do here is everybody within two. That's cool. You can click on it, and then before you cast it, you can see everybody but this guy. No, cancel that. Okay. Click on this guy. There we go. Plus five to everybody's morale there. That brings him to 36, so he gets the bonus. And nobody else is panicking now, which is great. <laughs> gotcha. Good. Ooh, you're not faced correctly. Get that one. And now I'm going to have you run because <laughs> you're low on HP. Oh, missed an 85. Ah, uh, that's garbage. Next. Onslaught, miss. Gotcha. Good. Take the ha! Hit with the fifteen. Yeah, there seems to be some some things you can do with terrain here, which is awesome. You have seventeen health. But now you're just gonna be beat up on by everybody. Peasant it as well. You have Miss Move up one. Oh miss the seventy-five. That's garbage.
There you go, that's why he's the leader. <laughs> ah! Peasant! <laughs> Unfortunately, the peasant does not get experience, which is why I didn't want the peasant to get that, that kill. Sad face! <laughs> you! You're hired! Come with us! <laughs> Give him proper weapons. Cool! We won our first battle! Woo! That took, what, half an hour? Or so? So that, that felt right kind of like a like a fire emblem stage like a longer fire emblem stage so everybody gets exp uh maybe a hundred to level kind of like a final fantasy tactics or fire emblem Rudrick got the most. He got 47, one kill. His archer got both kills. He got 36 EXP, 33, 24, 17, uh, 18, 29. How much experience do they get? I'm not sure. It's not completely based on kills because this swordsman got 33 EXP, but he didn't get a kill. We also got 52 gold. Game saved. Here you can change the difficulty. Karma. Oh, here we go. <coughs> You're in the army camp. Here you can hire and level up units, resurrect dead units, which is awesome. Not if you're playing in Nightmare. Hire assistants, buy and sell potions, equip units with potions and artifacts. You have two liquid fire potions in the storage. Here. Equip your units with them. You can equip potions either by using the equip button or by dragging the potion to the unit while holding down the left mouse button. To continue the campaign, you need to go to the world map. Oh, there's a world map. Awesome. To do this, click the left mouse button in the globe in the upper left corner. Awesome. I think that's a... That was a really good... Really good first, first stage. Things are in your favor. You have the two peasants which can either just take hits or do a little bit of damage and even though they have a few special units like the boar rider and the berserker things are in your favor if you're play at least if you're playing on normal um you have the archers which can do some damage silver griffins assistance oh we can buy assistance price oh we have a herder gold is all at the beginning of battle, all enemies are cursed for three turns. That sounds awesome. At the beginning of battle, all players' units receive a plus three to morale. Ooh. Before the start of battle, set fire on two empty hexes. That's awesome. Because we could set it up to have fire next to our archers so they get the fire arrows. Or, if we're at night, we can put the fires in strategic places. That way we can see. For the start of battle, put a catapult. I like these NPCs. Well, they're not NPCs, but these assistants that just help you a little bit at the start of battle. All enemies are poisoned for two turns. Not available for hire. Oh, we can't get those. For the start of battle, put a raptor ally. I want a raptor. <laughs> put a barrel of gunpowder on the battlefield. <laughs> Clan warriors, axe throwers, and runesmiths are recruitable. So this lets you recruit more. All units of level 5 to 8 get a herder and 50% experience. Oh, that's cool. Singing sword are recruitable mercenaries. Here's 1 to 4. Get 200% experience. I guess to help units catch up. That'd be great. Karma no less than 12. So you have a karma system. I mean, I think that's really interesting. mercenaries oh we can hire stuff oh priestess magic attack yay can heal want <laughs> no what <want> now <laughs> later in the campaign don't care what now healer give me i also want a knight and a paladin <laughs> this paladin looks awesome we can hire peasants. <laughs> we can hire a peasant. Which may not be a bad idea. The damage is low, but then we can start building barricades and stuff like that. 
Swordsmen and archers. Oh, we're at max army size. Never mind. I was going to ask what max was, and then I saw this up here, 7 out of 7. So far, this is really cool. <laughs> okay, health potion. Regenerates uh, 10 health, so you get 10 health. Cost 7. Nobody needs mana. How much can everybody carry? Roderick can carry one. The archers carry two. They carry two items. Behold my mighty army of seven warriors. Heck yeah! We got through the first fight. <laughs> 60! Oh, that's how much EXP they need. 60. Roderick needs 60. Okay. Cool. Okay. Generates fires on two hexes randomly selected within one hex of the target. <laughs> How far can I throw it? Four. Range four. Units set on fire receive four magical damage. Minus magic resist. Has a range of four, so you can throw it four. I don't necessarily need it to do the damage, honestly. I'd like to have it just to start a fire and then use fire arrows. <laughs> And if I get the extra, if I get the extra damage from the liquid fire, that's a bonus. Hi, Maze. Didn't get another notification. Dang it. Twitch, why? Yeah, that's why I also put something on Twitter because I was afraid that it may not do a notification again can set a barrel on fire if enemies are next to it yeah yeah i'm wondering if i have fire arrows if i can shoot a barrel i'm gonna give i'm gonna give the liquid fire to the i'm gonna give the liquid fire to the archers oh you can rename them awesome you can rename the uh the swordsman and stuff Roderick, you can't rename. Important. <laughs> Important PC. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 7 is 49. That would be almost all the money we got. And Because I kind of want everybody to have a health potion. Potion of Purification. Gets rid of all temporary status effects. Undeads receive two damage. Ha! Ah, it's like holy water. That's awesome. There's the courage potion that we heard about. 20! Increase mail by 20? Dude! That's a lot! For... For, uh... For cash? Apparently, Twitch told nobody this is happening. That's lame. It's fine. I'm gonna put it up on uh, on YouTube. Um. That's cool. I like that. Winter breath. It flicks slow on all units within one hex. I guess slow makes it to where they move less. That would be great. Yeah. Two. Oh, there it is. It says in parentheses. If I would read everything, two less action points received at the beginning of turn. Ooh, they'd be able to to swing if they don't have a slow attack and they have the five action points water hexes are turned to ice and fires are put out no i don't want to put the fires out um, that's cool though you could turn water to ice i like the idea of uh I like the idea of you being able to change the terrain. I think that's really cool. Stink bomb. Inflicts poison. Let's see. Poison is minus one strength, accuracy, and evasion. And you eat a damage at the beginning of turn. On all the units within one hex of the target for three turns. That's awesome. I like that too. 
uh, rage. Plus two strength, plus one accuracy, minus one evasion. <laughs> that does not change. That's good. Five turns. Okay. Sacrifice defense for for attack. Vaguely, <laughs> tired of your crap. Ice level now. Vaguely remember that being a power in Advance Wars. That would be Olaf. <laughs> Stun Bomb. Inflict Stun. Minus 4 to Accuracy, minus 4 to Evasion. On all units within one hex. He would be awesome in this. <laughs> Since terrain would really, really matter. And with stamina being such a big deal. More so than fuel. Oh yeah. So then one hex of the target for two turns. So stunned. Minus 4 to Accuracy, minus 4 to Evasion. Cool. And stamina potion. Fully restore stamina. Drink. All right. Back in the game. Four action points. So you need the four action points to drink it, but then you get all your stamina back. I like these, but I still want everybody to get ten health back. <laughs> you can save the game. Let's save the game. First look one. Save. Can't hire anything else. I'll need 50 for the priestess. Plan ahead. <laughs> I'm going to give each fighter one. There you go. And just try to keep the archers out of harm's way. Cool. Cool. Map. You can select a new mission on the world map. To do this, click left mouse button on a mission icon on the map. You can zoom the map by scrolling the mouse wheel. You can move the camera with arrow keys or the mouse while holding the mouse wheel down. So mouse wheel or with arrows. Um, the thing that I, the uh, I guess information sheet that I was that I got with the game uh, said there are 42 campaign missions so this would be two <laughs> and that's that's if there's not any side missions we can go to like it just says 42 campaign missions so if there's any kind of side stuff we can go to um, I'm gonna assume that's not counted in it so I mean that's a in considering how big the uh the stages might get like that one was pretty lengthy um this could be a game that takes you a little while which means value sometimes if it's fun it means value if it's not fun then it's bad but <laughs> um that was super that was super cool i'm gonna do one more stage so we can see uh see it again um, i'm gonna do another stage but uh, this is definitely up my alley. This is cool. Destroyed farm. One week ago, Roderick had, filled, had fulfilled his childhood dream. He had formed a squad of mercenaries, the Silver Griffins, which is awesome. That's an awesome name for a mercenary group. Now, Roderick was canvassing the taverns of Mirstone for recruits in the evening gloom. He selected only the finest physical specimens who he believed would follow orders. He's proud of his progress thus far. When he had coaxed his silver griffins out of another tavern, Roderick observed a beraggled man staggering towards him. The man's clothes were torn, and he was caked in mud. The stranger collapsed at Roderick's feet. In the evening gloom, Curious Mirstone residents gathered around. P please help zombies to the north farm, the man spluttered. He pawed at Roderick's boots and fixed the mercenary with a desperate stare. There are children. P 
Please. With this utterance, the loused ounce of the man's strength deserted him. He groaned and curled into the fetal position. The Silver Griffins wanted a chance to prove themselves, to forge a reputation. Roderick steeled himself and led the Silver Griffins out of Mirstone. As they approached the farm, the mercenaries could make out shadows lurching between charred buildings in the pale light of the moon. Unpleasant sucking noises like boots being pulled out of a bog drifted across the night sky. Positioning of the units before battle, which sadly we can't have any more units. You can place your units on the Mark Texas. Cool. So it's like setting up in, in FE. Um, to swap the position of two units, use left mouse while holding control. Okay. If there are no Mark Texas, you cannot change the position of units. They're forced. <laughs> no. It's a zombie! Six accuracy, four strength. Three evasion. No morale, because... Zombie. Or maybe it just doesn't have the morale to... to no, it has morale. They're starting. No morale, because zombie. But it probably doesn't take the, uh... The negatives... From... From morale, either. I mean, it's not gonna run or panic. It's a zombie. Probably soulless. Unit has neither morale or stamina. Unit is immune to rage, curse, and bless. That makes sense. <laughs> Only has four. N has slow attack. This is what we're going to use for our advantage against the zombie. As long as the unit can move out of the way, the zombie can't move and swing. When unit kills an enemy in melee, the corpse turns into a zombie. Makes sense. Um, I did that already. <laughs> you can move how you, you can move how you face. Um, no armor, no magical resistance. Has a range of two though. So we'll have to get farther away than I thought because of the pitchfork. Has reach. But still... It can't move and swing. So you have to be within that range of two to get hit. Because four action points, it takes four to swing. He can't move and swing. Each hex has an illumination level. Illumination level is decided by the hour. Oh, it's nighttime. Blast it. That's why they give you the fire potions. Clever game. <clears throat> illumination level is decided by the hour and overridden by light sources. Campfires, fires, and ability illuminating. There are three levels of illumination. Bright, shaded, and dark. I assume it is nighttime. All of your non-dwarf units have day vision. Undead units have night vision, which is what's going on right now. Throw liquid fires to the enemies and fight on the non-dark hexes. Fighting on bright hexes will give you a net plus four advantage on both offense and defense because they'll get minus two and you'll get plus two because they have night vision. Uh, units with night vision, a minus two accuracy and evasion on bright. Remember, fires expire in a few turns. Take the most out of them. That should be like make the most out of them. Make the most out of the fires. Fight in the other dark will spell doom to the griffins. Because they'll have all the minuses. To apply a potion, you have to first select a potion on a control panel with left mouse button and then throw. Lame. <laughs> Barrel or crate. Zombies are not good. 
it's flammable. If I catch the crate, the, or in this case, the barrel on fire, I wonder if it lasts longer. The house is not flammable. Funny enough. The bush is... Hello, you're different. A ghoul. Ghoul does have armor. Fancier than, than zombie. Has morale. <laughs> So not soulless. Still undead, but not soulless. Has a few abilities too. Do you have any abilities? No. Zombie is plain. <clears throat> Ghoul has 25 health, 20 morale, 21 energy, movement of 5. So he has movement of what we just fought. Has the night vision. A accuracy, evasion. Only one range is melee. But has one armor and one magic resistance. Not that anybody can use magic right now. Deafening Roar. Unit inflicts stunned. Minus 4 accuracy and evasion. On all adjacent units for 2 turns. And deals the damage to them. That's not annoying. Carrion Feast. Unit destroys a corpse and regens 10 health. Lame. <laughs> can heal himself. Wearing unit wears off one extra stamina from enemy when attacking. Oh, so when it swings, you lose two stamina instead of one. Poison immunity. Unit is immune to poison, spit of poison, poison cloud. Blah blah blah. Is undead ghoul. Executioner. All enemies lose five morale when unit kills any units. Just because it does it in a very brutal fashion. Eww, I don't like that. Quick attack. Unit consumes two action points for one attack. What's the rating for this game? Probably T for teen. I would guess. I'm not sure if the, uh, the official store page is, is up. It should be. It comes out the 18th, but it, the, uh, Page may be up. You may be able to see there. But anyway, uh, quick attack. Unit consumes two action points for one attack. I'm not down for that. <laughs> I'm not down for that at all. That means it, he could move once and then swing twice. Don't like the ghoul. You get shot. <laughs> to the best of my ability. Corpse. Corpse me by skill carrying feast or raised by as a zombie by spell raised zombie. So. Okay, so the leader, the leader's the ghoul. No, there's two ghouls. The ghouls are the, the bad things here. The zombies are... Meh. I'm not all that scared. Oh, there's three ghouls? That's lame. Four? Four ghouls. I can't find any more ghouls. Stop. Go away. Why? Why do I keep finding more? Why can't there be more zombies? Okay. We're going to try to nullify the bad effect of not having light by using uh, formation. Our accuracy is going to be garbage because it's nighttime. Uh, if this goes poorly, we'll restart it, uh, load up the save file, and we'll buy more liquid fire. <laughs> Let's get started. So that's how far you can throw the fire. The black outlined, and then the blue one, the area it affects. I want to throw the fire here. 
That would be ideal. Until that ha until we do that. Ah, take one. I don't see any peasants or anything here to save. So, uh, yeah, your turn. They're rushing. That's bad. Then you won't be able to swing. You won't be able to swing. Okay, that's fine. Miss. Sad. You can swing from there, which stinks. You're facing the right way, though. Might as well take this time to heroic cry, which I should have done last turn. Next. Okay, now we're going to start throwing the fire. And we're going to throw it right there. Okay. Hey, that illuminates a bigger spot than I thought. Units cannot move onto a fire, but enemies can be pushed onto it. <laughs> I like that idea. We don't have any way to do that, but that's a cool idea for later. Receive four magical damage at the beginning of turn. It illuminates the map with the radius of two hexes. Lasts for two to three turns. It can be spread to adjacent empty hexes or to wooden objects. It spreads poorly and lasts shorter while it's raining. That makes sense. Fire inside a campfire does not go out or spread. Fires can be extinguished by Potion of Purification, Winter Breath, Spell Ring of Frost, or just through time. Cool. Didn't, I, wanted to, I wanted to stand there, so that wasn't ideal by any means, but... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Blast. Stand there. Take four. Unfortunately, the fire did not go anywhere near how I wanted it to, but... What can you do? Cool. Cool. In turn. Okay. We'll move the archer next turn. That's fine. Ah, oh, still got hit. Lame. Take four. Yeah, now we have now we have a really big advantage. We need to make it count. Oh, you missed with the 90. Need to make it count while we have it. Next turn. Ow, ow. Okay, still good. Try to kill the ghoul. Yeah, good. That one's dead. Good news.
you're dead. Turn to face the ghoul. You're dead. It pr fire's probably gonna go out this turn. No, it's still there. That's good news. Only 50. Because it's not in the light. It Well, yeah. It, when, when I heard tactical... Tactical turn-based strategy... I, I thought of something like a fire emblem... A, uh, maybe an ogre battle, um, you know, hex or square based moving units around, things like that. Um, there is quite a bit more to he here to keep track of, though. You are right about that. <laughs> Blocking line of sight. <laughs> Wither tree. High obstacle. High obstacle probably means you can't uh, shoot over it. That's fine. I still hit. <laughs> so that's good news. Missed. These are just zombies, right? Yeah. I should have moved over one. Because this is... dark game looks very good so far i agree i'm really into it move down one swing Oops. yeah look at that now it's minus one evasion the fire helps a lot because they're losing accuracy and uh evasion and we're gaining it so It definitely works in our favor. Take four. That's not ideal for him to move there and swing. I'll move you out here. Next turn. Crud. <laughs> That's not great for everybody over here. We can still take out the zombies. Or at least, hopefully, at least one of them. Um, take five, take five, you're dead, take five, good, you have 13 HP left, can't kill you, you have the potion left, which matters to me. Run up here. Because <laughs> I may have you throw it. Alright, over here, the ghoul has half its life left. Roderick only has three stamina left. Next turn. Uh oh. Now those schools are moving, and there goes the fire.
one more turn, and then we'll throw it. Until then... Miss... Hit, good. You're just gonna have to wait there for this turn. Kill? No. Okay, I tried. Five HP left. Oh, down to one. Next turn. You're going to get to swing twice. No, okay, good. Just swung once because he moved. Okay, now <laughs> you're going to throw the flask. You're going to throw it here. If we're lucky, it burns the ghoul. If we're super lucky, it burns the ghoul. If we're lucky, one of the barrels catches fire. If we're unlucky, neither of those happens. Aha! I'm hoping since it's flammable, it lasts longer. Because it has, it has fuel. It's not just out there. Missed. Gotcha. Good. Ugh, Roderick needs stamina. Everybody's HP is pretty good, though. Now we can deal with the ghoul. Missed, but things are still in our favor over here. All right. Yeah, come here. Uh, the deafening roar is lame. Oh, it hurt the... Uh, the fire's moved. Oh, that's... It can spread to a nation empty hexes or to wooden objects. It spreads poor... <laughs> if it's raining. That's right, it gets sprayed to adjacent empty hexes or to wooden objects. So the fire just spread. Probably because this was on fire. There's no more units, right? Right. All that's left is the uh, fallen tree. If you have to, you can run all the way over here. Just, just run. And use all of this to your advantage. Catch some of this on fire and just have it spread. That, that is awesome. That helps us a lot. Now, we lose a lot of the accuracy for this turn, but we still have a lot. You're low on morale. Look, the white flag. You can see it only has 13 morale, so it loses even another one. Awesome. Move forward into the light. Shoot this one. It may try to run and heal. I would love Roderick to get stamina, but... Missed a 90. Ugh. Hey, when that happens. Next turn. Uh, there's the deafening roar, which is annoying. What else caught on fire? Over there. Awesome. Oh, the barrels broke. Oh, they may have taken damage from the fire. Instead of the deafening roar. That would make sense. They broke, but hopefully that means the fire will last more turns than it normally would. Take four. Take four. Take four. Dead? Dead. Good. Good. Roderick has enough to swing. 
Next turn. Ah, took two. Rodrick's at nine, but I think this battle will be over way before... Not if the archers miss. Now here's the problem. There's no way for these guys to go help. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to spin the turn with Roderick to get all the stamina back. Try us again. There we go. There we go. And Roderick with the kill. Done! Woo! That went way better. <laughs> the light aspect is going to be super interesting. I like that. I like how you can mess with the terrain. I think that, that adds an extra level to this game, which is cool. We got 44 gold, so we almost got the money back for the potions. Stormbringer bow. Stormbringer gives plus one to strength. You have to be able to have, well, a ranged attack like an archer. <laughs> no ability, magical attack, no ability universal. That's interesting. So that makes it to where only certain units can use it. The archer can use it. <laughs> one of the archers gets this bow. Probably the one that got enough EXP to level two. You get the bow. <laughs> And plus one to strength, so you will hit harder. Um, two kills, Roderick got one, Swordman. All the Swordmen got one this time. Except this one got two, and then Roderick got one. Everybody got a kill this time, awesome. Yeah, loot! And the game auto-saves, but I'm going to save anyway. Units with enough experience can level up. You're offered three random choices out of the following. Plus three health, plus four stamina, plus three starting morale, plus one strength, plus one accuracy, plus one evasion, plus two magic resistance. On level five and ten, units are offered new skills and abilities. There is no respec bar, dismissal, or death. There's no respect bar. Dismissal or death. So... Choose wisely, but that kind of makes me sad there's no respect. <laughs> you just found an artifact too, by the way. These items will boost attributes, give abilities and skills. A unit must meet requirements to equip one, and only one can be equipped. Artifacts stay on units for any given battle. Transferring is only available in army camp. Unequipped artifacts are kept in storage, but not available to sell or purchase. Put the Stormbow on one of your archers. Um, the archer that is able to level, which is you. Goes here, I guess? Yep. Since it said you can only equip one. So you can see now he has six strength instead of five. Cool. Cool. Level up, selected improvement. Oh, plus one strength, plus two magic resist, plus three morale. Um, starting morale is interesting because if you got enough starting morale, you could you would have a permanent plus one accuracy, strength, and evasion. Well, not permanent, but that. But to me, I could just get plus one strength. The magic resist is really interesting for this choice. What do you have? Plus one accuracy, plus three morale, plus one evasion. Oh, plus one accuracy. I want my archer to hit. <laughs> You're level two. What do you get? Morale, magic resist, accuracy. I kind of want to take the magic resist because I think magic could be a pain later. Like, we're not seeing magic yet, but if the enemy starts slinging spells and stuff, I'd love to be able to take the damage down. What did Roderick get? Strength, evasion, morale. I 
kind of want to take strength and hit harder. Yeah, take strength. Roderick's going to be beat stick leader. I kind of want to give strength. I kind of want to take accuracy, but magic resist is interesting. Uh, still the same karma. Still can't take the priestess. Recruit her later. Have the ability to recruit them later. See, because you could take Endurus. Beginning of battle, all players receive a plus three to morale and be like, hey, we got morale. This is also cool. Set fire on two empty hexes right off the bat. That could help. I they have two skulls for uh, level two instead of just one. Choose wisely. You're quite a bit from leveling up. Still seven out of seven. Um... Chat, what do you think from what we've seen so far? We haven't seen mage users yet, but I'm just afraid in the future, mage could be annoying. <laughs> Magic users. And getting the plus one resistance could be really cool. Getting a plus two resistance, not even plus one, it's plus two. But strength is hard to argue with, and so is accuracy. And they still have their health potions, which is awesome. I think I will buy some more liquid fire, though. Because that sure was useful, just in case. It's night time. Yeah, the actors could be useful not just at night, but just period. Having... An extra plus five to hit, basically. Plus five percent chance to hit. And strength hitting harder is always good. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take the accuracy for this guy. I always like to hit chance. This guy, I'm going to take the magic resist instead of the strength. I'm going to take the magic resistance. He has three magic resistance. You're going to go... You're going to be good against mages. Just for something different. Let's take a quick look. The missing children. Because we saw the... Uh, the undead. The silver griffin stood at a distance and stared at the burning corpses of the unfortunate farmlands. At like a ghost, a fragile young girl emerged from the pallid light of the breaking dawn. Hello, what is your name? Roderick said as he squatted down to meet the child's vacant stare. Um, Lisa, Lisa, my, my, my brother and sister have been t taken away. The girl's lips trembled, but she was in shock. Any tears that flowed were snatched by the heat of the fires. Who took your brother and sister, Lisa? Where did they go? Lisa nodded her head to the north towards the city of the dwarfs. Kern Bowman. A horrible man and bony people took them. She shuddered and then broke down, throwing her arms around Roderick's neck. Sobs overcame her. So they headed this way. So this is the dwarf 
uh, dwarf place. But that's going to do it for this first look of War Banners. It comes out on the 18th for $20, and it will be on Steam. So it's on Steam October 18th, so 12 days from now. Maybe less than that, depending on when you're watching this. <laughs> Uh, $20. That was two stages, and I played for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, there's quite a few choices of... We haven't gotten any extra units yet, but I'm sure that's going to go up. Looks like 16 might be max. But you could get rid of some, like I get rid of Swordsman and replace him with something else. With different units. Uh, looks like you'll have 12 different units to choose from, including the peasant. <laughs> the cheap peasant, which would be interesting. You could probably do some kind of a uh, challenge run using peasants, I'm sure. Uh, but 12 different units to change up your, your, uh, your squad here with. And that is excluding any other hero type units we might get, which I just have a feeling you might get you know, one or two more, you know, named units as well. Um, the, if you have the cash, you know, getting the extra gold and buying the assistance is really cool. Like choosing your assistance wisely. How do you want to, some extra, extra bonuses? And just how are you going to make your squad? What type of units are you going to get? Um, 10 different potions that's not a, it's not a bad amount um the only way this could be better if we could well there is kind of an equipment everybody can have one item you find these artifacts to to uh to change up the maybe how some units work like now he has plus one strength we may find items that give special abilities that um change stats in other ways um, like I said, from the information sheet I got, 42 campaign stages, I think that's worth pointing out because, as always, um, I'm a person, bang for your buck. You know, how much time do you get out of the, out of the game you buy? Because I know I have very little money and a lot of you who watch my channel do as well. So that's an emphasis here. All in all, I really like what I've seen so far. This is definitely way up, way up my alley with the you know turn-based strategy. I like games like um, Fire Emblem, you know, Advance Wars tactical turn-based games, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics, um, and this this has those that that feeling to it. Um, definitely not as fleshed out or super in-depth as those, you know, more AAA, you know, big titles. But for in for an indie project, 20 bucks, I think from what I've seen so far, this could be very, very much worth, um, worth looking at and thinking about picking up, especially if you like those kind of games like I do, turn-based, strategy, um, RPG games. This this game has has the base right. Um, I felt a little overwhelmed at the beginning, but being able to hover over everything and see and being able to see what it does is a big plus. You know, being able to see strength, accuracy, and giving getting the description of accuracy. That way, you know the percentages. You know, evasion, the opposite of, of accuracy when you're going to dodge. Range of the unit, seeing armor, magic resistance, and it's all, um, the math is simple. There's not a bunch of crazy formula that you have to know to be able to plan some stuff out. Especially if you decide to play on a higher difficulty level. Oh, I can change it there. You can't go to Nightmare, you have to start the game on Nightmare. <laughs> And then play through that but uh 
You can play on easy and there'll be way less enemies that, for you to have to deal with. You know, that's what it says, less enemies. And I bet it's probably a significant amount of less enemies too. If you're just not very good at this game, at these kind of games, but it looks like fun. Um, that was on normal. And while the units got scratched up pretty bad, none of them have died. And the tutorials are decent. Um, it's more play and figure it out. <laughs> the game gives you the tools. It's like, okay, now kind of experiment a little bit. Like with the potion of fire. It's like, hey, you really should use the potion of fire and fight in the light. But then you trying it yourself, you see some different things. Like, okay, the fire spreads like this. Um... You know, oh, it can't spread like this. Oh, those catch on fire. Things like that. So, all in all, for for 20 bucks, indie game from uh, Castellan. Let me make sure I get this right. Is there a main menu? No. <laughs> I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of, click, of clicking quit game will send me all the way out of the game and the stream is just going to have a black screen, which I don't want. Um, Castellan Games. Uh, this is their uh, second game that they've, they've put out for like on Steam. Um, I haven't heard of the first one. Drums of War. But... Uh, this one, this one looks really good so far. So again, thanks to the Indie Bros for providing me with a key on behalf of uh, Castellan Games. And thank you very much for letting us do first looks at it, Castellan Games. I think that's great um, to do impressions and some streams and uh, give our first impressions of the game. What I've seen so far, you've got a really good game on your hands. If there are bugs and like they're going to watch this. But if you do happen to watch it, if there are bugs and things of that nature, I hope you keep up with the game as um, fast as you possibly can because I think this game is really good here on the on the surface with our the first impression. Getting different units will be interesting because it will change how you play. But so far, things feel balanced nicely and um, it's, it's just fun. It's fun. It, it, if you like this kind of game, if you like turn-based strategy games, if it's your first time you'll and you're trying this, you'll probably want to play on easy until you understand mechanics and think of how to put units and where you want them to be and range of attacks and things of that nature. But all in all, I think it's well built. Like I didn't feel completely overwhelmed at the beginning yeah i was overwhelmed but it's like okay what does this do accuracy okay that's the formula you do um if evasion and accuracy are the same it's 50 50 chance to hit for every at point of accuracy you have above their evasion you get an additional five percent to hit i can wrap my head around that and then if they have more evasion than you have accuracy, it's minus 5% for each one. Max 90 to hit, um, no less than 10. Armor, strength minus armor, that's how much damage you're taking. I can definitely wrap my head around that. <laughs> um, it, it, it feels thought out and built well so far from the beginning and that's saying a lot because when it comes to, to strategy games i've played some you know indie strategy games where you just feel completely overwhelmed at the beginning and you have no chance or just things just don't feel feel balanced very well um here it does so far like right off the beginning and i think that bodes well so definitely keep it on this game if these kind of games interest you. If you're a fan of Fire Emblem, that 
Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy Tactics, um, those kind of turn-based tactical strategy games, definitely look at this one. I'd love to find a way to put in the title <laughs> somewhere because there are people that watch Fire Emblem here that do just watch Fire Emblem on my channel. They don't watch anything else. Um, I'd love to get those people to take a look at this game because I think it would appeal to them for sure. And I think that would be great for them to not only support Castlin Games um, for what seems to be a, a fun game. Like, I'm... Th I really enjoyed the two stages I just played. You know, this is definitely, like I said, my kind of game that I, I enjoy playing. Um, you know, from time to time. I'm not always in a strategy mood, but when I am, this is definitely a game I could see myself sitting down and having a ton of fun playing. And also, um, to have people buy and support the game if if it doesn't end up being really good. So I hope that happens. Um, people don't read the descriptions. So I put it in the description. It's very Fire, fire Emblem-ish. But nobody will read that. I'll have to put it in the title somehow. <laughs> to get people to look at it. So there we go. Cool. That's going to do it here. Um, you're watching this on YouTube? Because I will put this on YouTube. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I think this is a really good start. And I I enjoyed I enjoyed playing this. This was this was really fun. Let's see if it does kick me all the way out. No, it gives me the main menu. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, Crestlin Games. Crestlin Games. Probably saying that wrong again. I apologize. Uh, three different languages up here, by the way. Oh, options. Um, go over that real quick. Because uh, I just started the game. <laughs> I didn't go over the options. Shell grid. You can have the grid on and off. I like to see the grid. Um, have circles underneath the units. I like that. So I have that on. Having... Uh, you see the, the numbers. You can have them in color. I like that much more. Than just the number I like having the circles of, of color um, this is interesting all units have 30% less health so if the if the combat seemed a little long to you which it didn't to me but if it did and you want to play a more <coughs> more quick kind of deadly game where where uh, hits really matter more uh, you can play with all units having 30% less health. They're just across the board. And making things more... More deadly. Uh, swaying trees. Is it on, off? I don't really see the difference. Uh, myself, I don't see the, the tree really moving. Um, but I turned it off because I figured it may... Eat up some graphic. Some, some graphics, so... There you go. And of course, sound and music volume. Are there which is really good and i'm playing in windowed mode that way i could see that the stream is working correctly cool again let me know in the comments what you thought about war banners i think there's um there's some there's some really good potential here for sure and um Yeah, that's, that's all I can say for now. <laughs> Till I play the uh, play the game more myself. But again, I was able to do a first impression of it. You probably have never heard of this game. I never would have heard of it if I didn't didn't get it. Now you know, and now you can keep an eye on this game. And it's I said, I'm really glad to have played it because. I would love to see more games like this. I would love to see more turn-based strategy games because I enjoy that subgenre of strategy games, but you really don't see them that much anymore. Now, without it being like a, you know, you see a lot of RTSs these days. 
Uh, so I think it's awesome to get a turn-based strategy game like this, and I'd like to see more, more, um, more of them done. Until the next first impression, I get to I get to do again. Thanks to the Indie Bros for the key. I'm Cinder89. Thanks for being here, chat. You're great. I hope you really enjoyed what you saw. Remember to shoot for the stars and take care, everyone.